Welcome, Forex fans. It's Rob the Forex Explorer, and I'm here for Explorminate because I am back with Explorminate, which is awesome. And I'm going to be doing a Let's Explore of Interstellar Space Genesis, the game from the minds behind SpaceSector.com who went off to decide they were going to do their own Forex game. And I'm here with Beta 2, which is the new version. It's probably, I think that I understand, feature complete. So we are going to be playing a feature complete game, but I guess some of the art assets and stuff is still are still to be worked on. Um, and we've got two new races as well. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with this game, but it is very much in the vein of Massive Orion 2 with some additions. And we'll take a look at those additions as we get through it, but uh, I don't have much time. I've got about three hours of this game, so I'm not like an expert here. I just want to kind of go through and show you what this game is all about where it shines, where it could do some work, uh, and just play along. Do a few episodes. I'm not a huge Let's Player because I don't really like to go with 15 episodes, so I apologize if you're looking for that, but I am going to look at it for a few episodes and, again, just sort of look and see what it's doing uniquely. So, first things first, let's take a look at the new game setup screen. We have the, you know, the, the huge. Uh, you have the galaxy size, the difficulty level, number of players all there to set up. We have options here for events which you can uh, change to be normal few or many you can also have an election election victory uh, it says it is visible to let this option enabled uh, that doesn't really make sense let this leave this option enabled when playing the game for the first couple of times as the experience will be much different without it uh, english is not so great there but it's fine random tech trees i like that because it changes things you'll see it it says it is visible not to choose this option when playing the game for the first time as the experience will be much different than normal play but we're going to do it anyways Random culture perks, I'm going to do that as well because I think random random stuff is cool. We'll show the culture perks and stuff like that later and we'll definitely dive into the tech tree as soon as possible. So, And what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the, the new races. So these guys are the hive mind kayak, I guess you could call them that. Um, she's like a insect, an ice insect, which is kind of unique. I've never heard of ice insects, but that's pretty cool. Uh, well, she being the queen, there's the queen, I believe, um, and it talks about the backstory here. There's also now the Nova, which are also female, it looks like, based on their anatomy. <laughs> um, and they are, they're unique, to, or they're, they're, I guess, the, the sand people. Um, they like desert planets, or Terran and icy planets are tolerable to them. They uh, don't like lava, acid, swamp, or barren, whereas the Kek here... I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Like Icy, and they also tolerate Baron and Desert, but they don't like Lava, Acid, Swamp, or Terran. So we're going to go with these guys because I think they're cool. Um, and I also think the blue color is going to look cool with them. Um, the Nova are definitely somebody I would want to be with as well, but uh, I can only choose one, and I'm an insect person. I like hive mind people, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. You can create your own race. Um, you can also modify them and stuff like that. Uh, through all that stuff you can also change leader name empire name and homeworld name but we're not going to do any of that we're just going to go into the game so let's play and here we are we are in the main screen here this is the strategic screen strategic screen is what i'm trying to say and this is like the main game, the main screen. This hasn't changed much in the last few builds, so I imagine this is probably the uh, the way they're going to have this uh, over overview uh, stay. And for the most part, it's pretty easy to understand. Uh, you do have your different map overlays here, so you can show sensors. You can uh, show system scan levels, which I think is pretty cool. I'm going to do that. Actually, I've never, I don't think I remember seeing that before, so that might be new. Um, you can show strategic resources which is of course important so i'm going to leave that on you can show systems with colonizable planets i'm going to leave that on as well and then you have a star distance measuring tool um that's kind of cool because you can be like yo uh, i think you can click on one and then click on another yep there you go so you can click on that and see how far it is from there pretty cool um but we're not going to use that right now i just want to show you what that was all about next we have zoom levels here you can also mouse to zoom in and out um I think the zoom levels are pretty great, so I like that. Up here, we're going to see our research. This is all pretty standard stuff, so I don't really want to go too far into it. We got space culture, which I think is kind of a silly name for 
space culture, but I guess I guess there's no other word for it. Uh, space culture. So as you build space culture, you're going to be able to like pick certain things. We'll look at that as we get to it. Here we go with our four strategic resources. Uh, we don't have any yet. They are good for various things that we'll find out as we go through the game. And then here is like your overview panel. We have our colonies, then you can go through explore planets, your asteroid belts, your strategic resources. Um, you would have the fleets and then the uh, ships, so individual ships. We're going to leave it at colonies, although it's surprising to see that we actually have knowledge of gas giant. So there's already helium in our little sphere of influence here, so uh, that might be something we could look at getting soon. But... First things first, let's go ahead and go to Termi here. And we're going to go to the planet. And uh, what looks like this is actually updated. So the background might be updated. It's still not my favorite. I would love to see the um, like the colony modules here updated to a... I really like the art style that they've shown right here. Like Clearly they have like a almost a cartoonish art style that I really like. It's unique to this game. Uh, I do think anytime you do like a cartoon style, as long as it's well done, it, it's pretty unique. It makes the game unique. I would like to see these colony modules a little bit more uniquely. I just don't like the 3D models very much. I'm going to get a little a little critical here. So anyways, this is the colony management screen. You're going to, again, see that things are pretty standard here. Uh, I can now automate. Nope, not yet implemented. Okay. Um, I, was, I was thinking that this is feature complete I might be wrong uh, maybe it's feature complete but but there's like a couple of niggling little things that are left to be done so yeah um, so we can allocate our production in various ways so kind of like the uh, production circle from Galactic Civilization 3 I forgot what they called it but the production wheel that's what it was called um, you can change the various allocations of your your uh, infrastructure your engineering planetary engineering and then your construction so we're going to do a little bit more on construction for right now because engineering doesn't need to be a focus right now um we seem to be okay all right so our habitat is going to allow for 18 percent population growth uh, if we come over here i think it actually if we yeah um uh, whoops sorry that's what i meant to do so we're plus 58 percent here now that i've scrolled it over so let's find a a decent little balance between the two people are good clearly uh, the more people you have the more things you can do uh, and the better your production and the more you can allocate but we also need to start building things what I'd really like to do is build lack of ship support in the Empire so we don't have any ship support in the Empire right now so maybe it's just best if we just go here and do trade goods for the time being we can hit the right button, the right click button to get out, which I love. I love that UI feature of any game. Uh, I do believe that the Endless Games started that, and I, I can't say enough good things about it. I really like it. Makes it very crisp. So we're going to go ahead and send our scout ships here. They're frigate class broom FRs. Uh, we're going to start basically exploring our surrounding area, just like we would in most... 4x games so this is something unique to interstellar space genesis i'm going to call it isg for short because interstellar space genesis is going to be a tongue twister <laughs> every time i say it but isg allows for like this uh, long range scanning basically and in doing this you not only uncover various potential uh like galaxy markers or galaxy um resources and stuff but as you can see if you look over the scroll over right over to the right so potential discover discoveries for basic scan black hole neutron brown dwarf so as you do this you get to uncover various systems uncover various uh resources and stuff and the further you go down the further you you explore and you um scan the more stuff you find it's pretty cool so let's go ahead and Let's take a look at our surrounding area. Let's go ahead and explore this section here. So that'll be this one here. And then let's also choose a technology. So here's our technology tree. It's not super exciting. Again, pretty standard. This game isn't really trying to break the mold. It's just trying to do something as well as it can, right? So we are looking at like, you know, a particularly dramatic 
technology tree, but what is here is pretty cool. And it's decently long enough. It takes a long it takes longer than you'd think to get through. So let's look at some of the stuff we can do right now. We can do the culture exchange complex, which would add some um uh, capabilities of basically bringing in people, um, Imperial Space Academy, which is going to increase our XP for starships, Med Bay facility, which is going to add morale, and then cloning facility, which is going to grow our people faster. So, um, I'm thinking that we do the cloning facility, but I also would like to know if maybe space elevator would be a good idea, because we really want to know, we really want to be able to, to, to manufacture things quickly. So, um... One free support ship. Uh, production. Five plus five production system per infrastructure level on Empire. I kind of like that. Off-world support. Let's do that. So again, I'm not a like an expert here. I don't know the like the the best routes, I guess you could say. I don't think there's I, I, currently I don't think there's any like, you know, uh, best route, especially when you randomize the technology. I'm not sure that there is like a one way to play this game. So um, but some of the stuff is still a little bit shaky to me too, so we're learning together. Hopefully that's okay. Uh, soon we'll be arriving here in Aslam's. I shouldn't have actually gone here because I know enough about this system, right? Uh, we're going to go to the system, and I know whether or not there's anything here. There is ideal gravity, but it's not habitable. This one's going to be... See, I like the, the color coding because it makes it very clear what is good for me and what isn't. So yellow and yellow clearly is not like super great, but it's uh, it's tolerable. Whereas green and green would be the best. So maybe going to Aslums wasn't the greatest idea. Um, Aslums? I'm going to call it Aslums. So I'm not saying ass. <laughs> Alright, so we have now Mandanai's uh, Madanides system. We have a few, a few planets here. Again, one that we're tolerating but not super excited about so we're going to continue looking for planets um that's going to be because we have our, our colony planet here or our colony ship here that we want to make sure that we expand our our empire here for so awesome all right we've already gone ahead and finished off world support so we can build support ships and we get one free support ship as a result of that so we're going to first take a look to see what support ship is um it allows plus five production and system per infrastructure level. So as long as we leave it here, it's going to add to our, our capabilities producing stuff here. Uh, so I think that's probably a good idea to just leave Rutler. Um, yeah, so we've gained that. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we can do next. So we've done off-world support. Now when you look at the other ones in the same box, as you can see, it says two times, right? Because now the tech costs twice as much to research. So there are some hard choices to make. In this case, had I really wanted two of these, which I kind of do want Space Elevator too, it'll now be more expensive for me to do Space Elevator. So it's, it's a decision that you need to make, um, and you need to make wisely. So let's go ahead and do Cloning Facility because I want more people on my planets because peoples on my planets are a good thing. Uh, let's take a look at the other stuff other things going on here on the menu so you got the remote exploration menu uh you have your empire overview which basically just allows you to see what your empire effects are uh, again reminds you what your biomes preference are your gravity preferences and stuff like that then here you'll see what you have diplomatically going on um and then your status for ranks once you start to to to, to What's the word I'm looking for? Meet. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Meet other people. So once you meet other races, you'll start to see how you rank compared to them. Of course, I'm probably going to rank poorly because I am not very good. Um, here we have ship design. So oh, this is the research screen. I'm not going to go here. Re uh, ship design. So you can make your own designs here. Um, yeah, the, I, the interface is pretty, pretty standard. And for the most part, it looks like they've got some decent graphics going on here. I like that. Um, it wasn't always like that, but now they're, it looks like they're adding some stuff. The laser is clearly low poly, but you know, like stuff like that, the, the actual ship hull here looks really good. So, um, some great things working here. And then we've got our diplomacy screen, which was pretty bare bones before. Let's see what it is. Once we start to meet people, uh, we have leaders, which just like in Moo one and Moo two, you have the, oh no, just Moo two. Sorry. Uh, you have the ability to 
recruit ship and colony leaders. So we'll get those as they come along. And then space culture I talked about, basically just a culture tree that you can uh, make your way through adding bonuses to various things. So we can do here social space social lights, um, SCP. I need to know, I need to know what SCP stands for. I need to figure that out. So we're gonna look at that. It also increases our, our BC tour from tourism by 100%, which is great. Or stuff like Astro Mining Guild, which uh, adds 50% production from asteroid production exploitations. Um, and then here you also can do plus 50% to remote exploration speed and so on and so forth. So each time you get space culture high enough, and I think we're one turn out from doing that. So we'll be able to make a choice next turn. And then of course you have your game setting screen. So uh, yeah, this this was a little quick overview. And then we've got what looks like, I think we lost a ship. Um, looks like we lost, yeah, scrap due to lack of credits. Oh, I'm, am I losing credits already? Was I not looking at that? It says plus eight, but I guess I was already in the negative. Despite being uh, doing trade goods here, which I do believe adds 10 production to 1 BC. Yeah. Huh. Um, I guess we should just leave it in the middle. What do you think? Because I don't know. Yeah, it's not really changing my output too much, but clearly I wasn't having, I wasn't developing or I wasn't generating enough BC to even keep two ships going which is kind of crappy um, remote exploration report so look I've actually found another system that wasn't there before maybe it was there actually <laughs> it was totally there before uh, I'm just blind but the I wonder what I mean let's see let's go back to oh it doesn't it doesn't let me okay yeah the exploration report it's not really showing me too much. I don't think there's anything new that I've learned from this that I wouldn't have learned from a scout ship going there. So we're just gonna send the scout ship this way. We are allowed to do our space culture thing now. So we can either add 50% to our remote exploration speed, or we can do some diplomatic modifiers, which don't really matter right now. Uh, or we can generate 100% more BC from tourism. I'm not sure anyone's touring our place just yet. And then, we have a smuggler leader appears or levels up uh, plus 50% production from asteroid production. Let's try this. All right. Cause I would like to get some asteroid production going. And that also lets me recruit a leader that is a, a mercenary or something. I forgot what he was. Um, anyway, so he offers to join for 275 BC. Um, hmm. And 88 BC per turn. I, I can't accept. I don't have enough money to, gener to, to get that, so I'm going to have to go ahead and reject that for now. We're going to go ahead and take on another sector. So if we could do this again, so we'll do it again. All right, we're going to find more out about this sector, and we'll, we'll see what if, if it generates any more information so you can see how this system works a bit better. Um, now that I only have the one scout ship, so the problem is my I, you can't see this because... Uh, okay, so we have I've got Empire Treasury six BC plus. Man, yeah. So I don't really, I don't really have anything going right now, which is not good at all. So because I'm not really doing anything to con produce any construction, well, no, because my production for every ten production I get one more BC. But I wonder if it wouldn't be better to just go this way. Nope, definitely not. All right, so coming over this way is better definitely better to as we have trade goods set up in our construction queue it's definitely better to focus more on the production than it is to come back over this way for infrastructure so I wonder okay let's take a look man see this is the one thing that really gets me about this game and it's something that I really feel like needs to take needs to have a hard look taken at it but everything in this game takes forever like, even if I were to go full infrastructure, it's 16 turns for one infrastructure. So, and then that clearly is going to put me, you know, I mean, I'm only going to be plus, plus seven then. I don't know if it's a good idea to rush infrastructure because, of course, you get, you know, higher, better things from, from infrastructure being developed. But 
again, it's just not something I know. So we got also population. Um, let's move it in the middle. Like if we do this here, it's 29 turns for infrastructure and 19 turns for population. That's just a long time. We're going to do that. We're just going to come back in the middle, I think. You know, that, that, that adds to our BC. That puts us right there with about 21 turns for the next population and 29 turns for infrastructure development. So, again, that needs to be looked at, I think, because it feels like that takes forever to take care of. Um, and, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe there's ways to kind of cheese it or make it better or you know, really dial it in to make it better, um, or, you know, to, to find the right balance for all of it. But, uh, in my short experience with this game, it just feels like everything takes forever. So, um, hopefully that can be looked at soon. I do think there was, you know, there's no, there is an asteroid belt here. So what we can do is come out here and I think an outpost ship. Yes. Outposts can be built on planets to exploit asteroid resources. So let's go ahead and do that and see, watch how long this is gonna take. 118 turns. See, I, I really feel like something's wrong there because there's just no reason for anything to take 118 turns. Even if I do this, watch this, I'll go to that and it's 34 turns still. 34 turns for one ship. That definitely feels like it needs to be looked at. Uh, nobody wants to wait that long for anything, really. So, um, clearly there's some work to be done with balance. Our research team has completed their work in the economics field, which means we now have plus 50% pop gro growth on our colony, which is great. That's going to mean also a negative 5 for our, our, uh, our BC there. So that's not good. Um, let's take a look and see what we're going to do next. Maybe we should look at doing desert or barren. Do we have barren planets? I know that there was one that was yellow here. Is it barren? Yes, it is. Uh, the gravity isn't so great. Is there a green gravity over here? Yes, there is. But it's for a Terran biome, and we are we are definitely not digging Terran biomes. So, for the most part, if we're going to do a barren planet, it's not going to be our most favorite gravity settings so we might come out here because it says there's something special on this planet um so let's go ahead and do the barren colonization and then we'll send our colony ship assuming that there's nothing here that we can colonize that's even better but let's go ahead and take a look see what's going on so we have a a better planet here so the icy biome is good for us but the, the uh, gravity is not so great here we have good gravity and a uh, decent biome so this is actually going to be where we go um, I believe this is the best place to go for us there's also something special as well but the fact that there's better gravity here it won't destroy our production once we we colonize it and once we get the barren technology we can go ahead and get that one so that will be what we likely will colonize so let's go ahead and send that colony ship this way as we wait for the research to develop. Um, all right. So we're just going to make our way down there. All right. So we've done some remote exploration. We're going to get reports on what's going on. So sufficient mineral richness means production per. See how you, all this new stuff is now being unveiled. So that's what's great about this cool little system is that we now, uh, without, you know, we, we get to uncover more about these planets with this system. Um, let's go ahead and start to, oh, you know, we'll keep going. We'll keep doing this because I want to see more and more about what's going on. And it's possible there's a rogue planet here too. As you saw that, I don't know if you, you noticed that, but as we mouse over this, you can see potential discoveries for full scan include a bosun star and a rogue planet and unlikely a monster so there might be a monster uh, possibly not likely but possibly hiding out over there so we'll have to see what it unveils as we get through that all right here we go so now we've got cognora cognus cognoris cognoris yeah cognoris i like it uh with one planet one measly little planet 
colonization possible at... Ooh. Oh, yeah, of course, because we have the icy biome. So I don't really care too much about that right now. Um, and I don't really want to go to that one. I want to do the other one once we get the Baron. Because as much as it would be cool to have the good biome for us, it's not so great to have negative 50% production and population growth. So, no thank you. All right, so we'll move this fleet up here. It's going to take a while. And we will hit next turn to see what's going on. We're not really close to anything here. We can add to this by taking away our produ our BC production. Um, clearly, we're struggling a bit when it comes to BC, so I'm not going to be doing too much investing and all that stuff right now. But you can do that. Uh, these are unique abilities I totally forgot to mention. So the year, they are unique to each of the races. In this case, we have Obsessed Builders, which allows for... Um, Let's see, it has a passive effect. Click to activate when ability is ready. It needs one Empire improvement to have been built in the Empire. It needs a cruiser class starship to have been built in the Empire. Uh, hurrying a construction costs hurrying construction costs only 25% of normal costs. Uh, there are some English issues here. Uh, research per pop in Empire. Um, and hurrying a construction causes no morale penalty in penalty in colony. Um, hurrying construction. <laughs> you don't a. There is no such thing as a construction. Um, and then we have collective transcendence, which means that a player must research at least two techs in every field. Requires that a technology is currently in the research queue. Cl uh, click to activate when ability is ready. It discovers the technology currently being to researched immediately. That's cool. So yeah, those are two things that are unique to this race. Um, clearly there are a lot of conditions for stuff like that, so it's not something you can like spam and just use the crap out of. So I like that, and the unit cooldown, or the ability cooldown for that is 40 turns. So yeah, those are things you want to use strategically for sure. Alright, so we finished in engineering uh, the Baron colonization, which is great, because now we can go to our colony ship here, colonize that decent little planet over here. So we're going to colonize Gluastra 1 and clone facility yes please it's going to take 207 turns holy crap see what I'm talking about that is absurd also my BC generation jumped dramatically holy crap I wonder if that's because I, I, I don't know how or why that jumped so high um, and I also don't like that little Tolerable once dome or terraforming. Okay. Well, I don't have either. I'm sorry you have that yellow mask on. <laughs> it means you're unhappy. You are unhappy from the biome. That's fine. I understand. You don't really like the biome. That's cool. But your yellow face makes me sad. So, um, I don't know why we've gained some. Oh, because the colony ship must have been rather expensive to have. And now that we've actually used it, we no longer are paying out the butt for it. So, great. All right. That's good to know. We're going to put a colony cloning facility up afterwards. Uh, looks like we are gaining somebody in 12 turns, um, which is good. But other than that, we're not really going far because these things take forever. Good God. All right. So, now we have a colony established in Glorastra. We can now research something else so what should we do uh, i like the idea of moving further farther um so improve logistics allow ships to move up to seven parsecs away from settlements that might be what i do and we'll come back around to look see what we're gonna do after that because i'm not really in the need for weapons or defenses just yet i do i want to explore more so i think the improved logistics is a good idea and it looks like it's only uh, it's like roughly eight turns away, so we're not too far. Choose an, in choose an infrastructure specialization for Colony Gloastra. So this is also something a little unique to this game. We have specializations for each of these particular, each of these colonies. Um, this one can be specialized either in planetary engineering, civil engineering, or aerospace engineering. Um, if you mouse over them, you can see that they do they do stuff like 25% um, eco engineering on planet, terraforming on planet. Uh, this one's 20% building construction on planet. Um, this one's plus one construction slot and colony 
Uh, I don't know what that even means. Construction slot. Maybe here? Yeah, I don't know. And then 20% ship construction on colony or plus one ship support points and then all the other stuff too. I'm going to go with... The building construction on colony. I like that. Plus 100 building production bonus flat on empire. For all these perks. But I like the idea of being able to maybe... Oh, wow. Okay, it definitely dropped my time to build quite dramatically. Um, even though it really shouldn't be that damn long. <laughs> uh, but anyways, that's something that definitely can be fixed. Of, of course, we're still in beta 2, so there is time to fix things. Time to balance things for sure. So... We are hopefully going to see some of that very soon. Now that they've got all the systems in place, it's time to start looking at how the things work and what's what's in need of changing. So I think that's definitely something they need to look at because that has always been a, an issue for me. And I haven't really said much on the forums because uh, I haven't really invested enough time in this game to know if the turn time stuff is balanced in the long term. Like, like. I haven't made it past maybe, uh, I'd say turn 40 or 50, so I don't know if the turn time stuff dramatically decreases as you gain more research stuff, but uh, we'll see. So we're going to move, alright, we didn't, we didn't take a look at this, um, it doesn't look like anything's particularly good for me. Uh, remote exploration report, so we've found a source of helium 3, uh, looks like that's here on the gas giant. Um, we've also found another helium three. We're now completely aware of what's going on in this system and also completely aware of what's going on in this system. And we found a bunch of helium. So that's good. Let's go ahead and choose a new sector to remotely explore. So now we've completely explored that remote sector. I would like to probably go down here where our new colony is. We'll come around here and we also have a new leader that's approached us. So. They are a ship leader, which means I'm going to say no because I don't have ships that really are in need of them. Uh, wow, I've never actually gotten this. So nature provides many tools, blah, blah, blah. What technology pa path shall we choose? Text will be added to the text tree. Do we use an industrial fusion or militarized fusion? So we can do better production and stuff like that. Or do we use the helium-3 for milita military reasons? That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to do it industrial reasons because, as I've already said, it takes too long to do anything. So maybe if we can start actually uh, getting some of this helium, we can now exploit it to increase our production levels. So we'll be able to do that once we hit the 20 turns here. <laughs> That's so freaking long. Uh, because then we can send that outpost ship to here and then we can generate some helium. Here we go, we got some space culture going, yay. Um, two free outpost ships, hell yes. Oh man, both of these are great. Um, negative 50, oh man, this one's really good. So I'm gonna go with that one. Yes, so we get two free outpost ships, which is great. And on top of that, we also get negative 50% um, production costs for those things. So let's send one here. And then what was the other thing I wanted to come down here and do? So asteroid belt what what are what are these things good for so as soon as an outpost is established the asteroid belt can be exploited in several ways for its minimal wealth to boost production or as a commodity ah right cool so what about here can we do that oh there's no asteroid belt here so let's see what that does there's two fleets um i need to get through down to the bottom of these let's go ahead and just next turn it i couldn't I couldn't quite click through that. Um, so we're going to send one here because I want to see what it does when it gets to an asteroid belt. I want to see how, how well it contributes to my production levels. So let's go ahead and get that down here. Now we've got this going. We're going to go ahead and... Do I click here? No, I don't. I probably click on this and then build outpost. There we go. And yes, I'd like to build an outpost there. So now I'm gaining plus one helium per turn. All right, and then we're going to gain this one as well. We're going to build an outpost here on the asteroid belt. And no exploits. So it needs asteroid mining tech. 
cool. I, <laughs> I don't have asteroid mining tech. So I'm not gaining anything from that, which sucks. All right, so remote exploration here in this area has nothing to report. I have um, the ability to say yes to this guy who can do spy missions, but I don't want to spend 275 BC. So peace out, homie. And we'll go ahead and do that next one, one more level. So how far are we away from this? We're at plus 28, so let's go ahead and invest a little bit into our research so that we're now eight turns away. Um, we'll also invest a little bit in this, 17 BC per turn. Uh, we have 232 BC. I think that's a good, a good trade-off. All right, so outpost ship has been completed. So we're gonna go ahead and go to another Actually, let's go ahead and click to see if there's where was the other yeah there was there was there was one here. So let's go ahead and exploit more of that helium by bringing the outpost ship there and building an outpost there on that gas giant. And yes, we'll go ahead and oh that's right I forgot how to do it already. I'm gonna do this. Very good. I like it. All right. So now we've got two helium per turn. Once we get to the next, once we get through this next research topic, I'd really like to see what kind of stuff I can do now with it. And I keep getting ship leaders. I do not want ship leaders. I don't care about ship leaders. I want colony leaders. Please send me a colony leader. All right. So what's next? What do we do next? We are going to bring this guy. This way, we're gonna take a look to see what happened here. Nothing great. Um, you know what I might do with the next exploration is I'll take out this sector so I can see what these two are without having to send my ship all the way over there. All right, and all right, we have pop increase. All right, good deal. So what has that done for me? It means my cloning facility is about to be done. Wow, my production must have jumped significantly with that one person. Uh, 132. I don't, I don't know what it was before. But I know this was like 20 turns out, and we just finished that op outpost ship like a couple turns ago. So clearly, oh, this is very much like the old Galactic Civilizations 3 model, where... Every time you've basically, ex um, you, it's not like, it's not building. You're not generating more helium. You have exploited two and you have two, um, which is the way the Galactic Civilization 3 model used to be until they realized they didn't like it. And I'm not sure how I feel about it here either until I can start to see what we do with that stuff. So looks like um, a fleet of some other techno of other races there. So we've now built our cloning facility. What's a survey ship do? So it does uh, performs full system scans. It's remote, uh, station increases chance increases chance of finding something worthwhile in ruins. Um, lack of ship support in the Empire, which means I see. Uh, I would imagine that's because I don't have enough money, or it might be that people don't want ships. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't. I don't actually know what that means. So, um, yeah. Is there anybody any, anywhere worth colonizing? I don't think so. Oh, I don't even need to do that. I can just do this. All right. So we've got this one, which is there. Uh, the medium gravity is not going to be so great for us. Uh, that would be the only one that's really, nope, we've got a couple here, huge, icy, but heavy, yeah, we already knew about that one, um, uh, medium and medium, we don't have one that's good for gravity for us, um, no exploit, we definitely need to look at, see what that, ha how we do that, take care of that, so, uh, we'll come back to that soon, and then it looks like we're 99 turns away from gaining somebody. I wonder if I could send people. I wish I could send people to that place. So I feel like sending people to this colony would help speed things up a bit. But I don't think you can. At least I don't know of a way you can. So from our next place report, we have now learned a few things about the system here. As you can see, there's this flashing stuff. 
Oh, look at that. There's a wormhole there. Alright. I'd like to know who those people are, but what I'd like to do now is actually go ahead and explore this area. So I don't have to, like I said, so I don't have to send my scout ships all the way over there. It looks like I'm going to meet these people right now because they're about to come into the same... Yep. I don't want to fight them. Select combat if you wish. If you're the defender, click on that. Alright, good to go. I don't care. Um... Yes, I do wish to stand down. I am not interested in attacking. So, who is it that I met? Oh, okay, I don't have scanner technology, so I can't actually do that. Cool. Alright, well, it looks like it automatically generated trade goods for me. Um, because I don't really have anything else to build at this point. So, I mean, I, I don't know if I can actually build these ships... Or if they're going to, like, destroy my economy the second I do that. So, plus five production system for infrastructure level empire. That's a really great ship to have, but I don't want to... I don't want to build it if my people don't think I can handle it. Don't think I can support it. So, looks like we are... Okay, oh, look at this. All right, this is cool. So, look, now we can do fusion production, which is plus 20... Plus 2, 0.25 production per pop unit and empire per source of helium. Holy crap. Um, so that would be 0.5 production, and then we could just keep going and getting helium and really adding to our production capabilities. So that would be very good after our improved logistics, which is just one turn away. So we're going to definitely take that, take advantage of that. Very good. So now I can move even farther away. Uh, we're going to continue moving this guy this way, and then we'll, oh, we've got... The humans. Hello, humans. Um, hello, Emperor Rako. I bear greetings from President Haram of the great human race. What can we do for you? We accept a gift of our yes. Uh, let's do let's do that. Let's make let's let's start up. It's a puny gift, but we'll take it anyway. Screw you, man. Um, they are much better are or better better than I am. They're not as good at production, and they don't have as many people, but they are better in everything else. So, they have better fleet strength, better technology, great. Very not good. But that's not ex unexpected because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's check out what this is going to be. Alright, we've done the remote exploration here. It's just a gas giant. It's also probably got helium. Um, and then we've also taken this one. Let's see what's here. Nothing particularly exciting. Let's move back up this way to get away from the humans here. And then we will explore this sector here, which is that planet right there, I'm sure. And then we're four turns away from getting through our new helium thing. Once I do that, I think I'm going to call it an episode. Because I do want to see how much it increases. So we have 94 and 8, all right? So we want to we want to check out how much that new technology is going to help us with the two helium-3 resources um, I want to see what it does for our, our capabilities. Oh, great. Space Amoeba. We're going to get the... Oh, we can't. Oh, we can take a look at combat. Why not? We haven't done that yet. Um, turn-based. And I'm going to get crushed here because it's a Space Amoeba. But you can't auto-resolve at this point. You can do a variety of different things here. I have not really spent too much time in combat because, again, I haven't spent many... Many, many turns in this game, but, um, yeah, I mean, the fact that it's turn-based is going to make a lot of people happy, because, uh, everybody likes turn-based. I'm not really going to spend too much time here just yet, because I am in a very small frigate that's not very capable of doing anything. It's going to get crushed here in a minute. Um, yep, there we go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, I got destroyed by the Space Amoeba, but the good thing is now I know where the Space Amoeba is. And it's in the Gumulov system here, so I'm just going to stay the hell away from that system. Uh, we now have Space Culture. Great. Um, we can terraform uplifted worlds, plus 30 BC per colony on uplifted worlds. We can do Space Privateers, which is one pirate leader appears on levels up, or levels up, uh, plus 50% revenue from asteroid trade exploitations. Uh, plus 50% to remote exploration speed is probably where I'm going to go. Um... 
because I don't get tourism. I don't know what tourism is. I don't even know where I would find out about tourism. No, I don't want to do that. I want to just find out what's where tourism, where I would find out about tourism. There's space culture. Um, I don't see anything about tourism anywhere. So I wouldn't even know what it does. I'd imagine it probably, and that's my alarm system. <laughs> my bad. Um, but yeah, so it probably does something for my BC generation, but I'm not sure. So um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say about that because I think, I think uh, it's not well described maybe they're sort by population sort by morale ecological employment culture bc research no i don't see anything about tourism so i'll need to find out what tourism can do for me and whether or not it's something worth investing in right so plus okay great this is gonna be great let's see what it's done okay so 100 now so it was from 93 to 100, which isn't that big of a deal. Uh, no, I don't want you guys. Get out of here with that. Um, so that didn't really do as much as I was hoping it would do. But that's okay. Uh, we need to mine asteroids for sure. Raw materials materials can be mined from an asteroid and then used to boost production. Yeah, we definitely need to do that. But it sucks because I did this in the same box. So now it's going to be 12 turns, which isn't too bad, actually. Hell, it's not nearly as long as producing anything takes. Oh, great. So there's actually a really good planet over here at Jui. So uh, I think it'd be a good idea to build a colony ship. It's going to take 75 freaking turns. Holy crap. Don't care about that. So let's go ahead and do this one again because I'd like to see more about this system and this one here. And I think my future goals are to continue building more outposts for the helium 3 so I can build my production levels up um, and then just do the best I can from there these turn times are ridiculous it takes forever to get anything done around this game I'd like to see that changed ASAP but we will continue playing for another episode or two because I'd like to see how this kind of plays out and I'd like to learn more about this game as I teach you who may not have the game about this game. So, yeah, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see something in particular, let me know too. Because, again, I don't really know what I'm doing. So, I want to know if there's something that I'm not aware of that you uh, may have seen in a dev diary or something that you want to know about. So, please do. Please let me know. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. And until next time, you guys keep exploring.